So what is chem sex? Chem sex is using drugs while having sex. In this episode, we discuss a topic that's pretty controversial, sex and drugs. And in some cases, the drugs that we talk about are illegal. Vive Healthcare doesn't condone the use of illegal drugs, but we do recognize that drugs and sex being used together is actually quite common and potentially creates vulnerability for HIV acquisition. And so what we want to do is enable really open, honest conversations so that people can be educated and make smart decisions about their about their lives, about how they pursue their sex lives, and in a way that can allow them to both have fun and be safe. And so I hope you find this episode to be educational. Welcome to Vive Healthcare Science on the Sofa. I am Dr. Kimberly Smith, Head of Research and Development for Vive Healthcare. We're talking a lot about about chem sex. And so I am here today with Charles Stevens. I'm the executive director of the Counter Narrative Project, or CMP. We're based in Atlanta, Georgia. And we advocate on behalf of black, gay, bi, and queer men. We also believe that narratives are indispensable to social change. So what is chem sex? Chem sex is using, uh, using drugs while having sex. So um, the term chem sex sounds very Sciency. Is it the same thing as party and play? I think that those terms are used synonymously, but I also recognize that, you know, people call things different things. I actually haven't actually heard people use the word chem sex in, in, in real life. Yeah, I think the first time I actually heard about chem sex was probably in the context of a journal, but I imagine some people do I've actually heard people use PMP more or emojis. Is chem sex dangerous? And if so, what, what are the risks? Chem sex can be dangerous, but I think it's important that we have a, a, a pro pleasure, both a pro pleasure and harm reduction approach in how we talk about chem sex. Chem sex is such a broad term, and there's so many different drugs that potentially could be in that category of drugs that are used for quote unquote chem sex. Some are riskier than others. Um, where are you getting the drugs? Are they are they, you know, potentially? contaminated, laced with other riskier drugs like fentanyl, all of those things worry me. Some of the um, literature that's out there around, uh, around chemsex has said that chemsex has contributed to um, increasing HIV uh, transmission, increasing HIV in the gay community. I always have the concern that sex and drugs has the potential to be a dangerous mix because people, when they're under the influence of drugs, sometimes don't make the right decisions, right? Mm -hmm. Don't make the best decisions. And, and in some cases, people can become addicted to drugs and then because of their addiction, they aren't able to make uh, good decisions. And so I'm always cautious about the potential impact of drug use on HIV transmission. Is chem sex something that only happens in the gay community or is that an urban legend? It appears that many of the discussions around chemsex usually associated with LGBTQ plus communities. Because of homophobia and transphobia, I think LGBTQ plus folks are particularly vulnerable to stigmas and mythologies around sex that uh, perpetuate a narrative of us as being deviant, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so I think that we have to certainly address this on the level of services and resources and access to information, but also on the level of shattering myths. Mm -hmm. I do think that we should recognize that risk and safety don't exist as two separate things, but they're a spectrum. And I think it's quite apt in uh, thinking about chem sex. If there are folks that engage in chem sex as a way to pursue pleasure, it's you know it, it's something that is comes from a, a, a pleasure space. And then we can also recognize that for others, there may be a self-destructive component to it that it may actually be having negative implications. There are folks that have a really hard time finding compassion, finding humanity, having empathy. Mm -hmm. I think it points to one of the research gaps in the literature that we have to better understand who's having chem sex. I think we need to hear more from people that are having chem sex, especially women. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that there are just, just a ton of gaps. We do have to create spaces where we can have the conversation about, um, about sexual pleasure and how 
how, how individuals can experience it without making judgments and have conversations that, you know, meet people where they are and look to reduce harm as much as we possibly can. I'm excited about the possibility of, of clinicians and health providers being super sex positive. <laughs> it's so frustrating to me that that's actually a rare thing. You know, I hope what we can have people learn from this, providers learn from this, is that they need to be able to be talking to their patients, that they can be honest with them about their sex life and about whether or not they're using drugs. And so it's be about creating those human-to-human -human relationships and allow them to, exactly as you said, be able to be, in a non-judgmental way, pursue pleasure in the way that, that they need to without um, making themselves vulnerable um, for, for HIV or other STDs. Well, Charles, this has been, really been yeah. great to have a, um, you know, an open, honest discussion about something that people have a hard time talking mm -hmm. about. Yeah. So thank you for being here, and I really appreciate all the work that you are doing. Keep doing it, and thank you. Thank you.